So the default line is going to be Okay, so you hear me through this? Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, this is chapter 16, and uh, this sort of mirrors so chapters 16, 17, 18, and 19 mirror the chapters 12, 13, 14, 15 in the sense uh, those four chapters which we did so far are on for a particle. These four chapters are for rigid bodies. So uh, for a, the difference between a particle and rigid body is that for a particle, uh, we treat the thing as a dot or a point object. The dimensions don't matter, but for rigid bodies, we see that dimensions actually matter. So the length, width, center of mass are all useful things. And uh, additional complexity of rigid bodies is that a rigid body can also rotate. So there'll be equations for rotation. While there are no equations for rotation for a particle, so what we have done so far. So to get started, we are doing kinematics in this chapter. Uh, first, we'll look at rotation about fixed axis like this, like a pendulum. Uh, these formulas are very similar to the formulas we did for linear motion. Omega and alpha are the angular speeds and angular acceleration. It is Omega is rate of change of position, and alpha is rate of change of uh, speed, angular speed. Uh, this formula, the third one, is similar to A equals V dV dS, right? And then if the acceleration is constant, then you can write the simpler equations, which actually mirror the equa equations we've studied for linear motion. For example, the first one, uh, the, the corresponding equation for linear motion is V equals V0 plus AT, okay? We replace V with omega and A with alpha. So it's not new uh, equations. They're just the same equations, but they hold for uh, rotation about an axis. Okay, let's, uh, two more things, velocity of a point P Okay, now this is assumed as a rigid body and you're trying to uh, figure out how the velocity of a point on the rigid body moves on the rigid body So O is the axis of rotation, axis of rotation. R is the distance of the axis of rotation from point P, which is the point of interest. Then the velocity of P, let me just write it as velocity V, is always equal to omega cross R. And the vector there actually gives a direction. It's always going to be at right angles to the line joining O to P, always. It's always true. So the second figure is for acceleration. We want to find the acceleration of a point P. So velocity is always at 90 degrees, but acceleration is not at 90 degrees in general. So acceleration has two components. There's one component in the, the tangential direction, one in the normal direction. And so the net acceleration is at an angle, so it's not 90 degrees. So the acceleration formula is, first of all, AT is alpha R, something we've done before, right, in the NT coordinates. A, N is omega square R. We said it was V square divided by R, but there's a relation between V and omega, so you get this formula, and then uh, we can write A as AT UT, plus an un where at ut 
ut, un are unit vectors. A n and left one is A n and the other one is A t. This should be my. Okay, so these are actually the magnitudes. But the actual formula is uh, <coughs> alpha cross r minus omega square times r. Okay, so the first two are the magnitude. And then the last one is the vector. And there's a derivation in the book. I will not go through that. But the last formula is the acceleration formula as a vector. Yeah, final thing, and then we'll start solving problems. Uh, Okay, uh, there are a couple of, uh, well, most mechanical systems will have some form of gearing, okay? When there are gears, they're really uh, things which have uh, teeth and they mesh with each other and as one shaft moves, the other one moves because of the teeth meshing against each other. I'm representing that by circles, but really there are teeth which mesh against each other. Now, we got to know a few things about how to analyze such systems and that will be uh, some of the questions we'll solve. Uh, so, if there are two gears mashing like shown, okay, I'm going to join their center lines, uh, put in radius. Let's say that the one of the gears is R A, the second one is R B. So the the right one is B, the left one is A. The point P is a point which is the intersection of those two gears. And we can write the velocity of P. So this is a rigid body now, and it's uh, moving, and we want to find the velocity of a point P. Okay, We already looked at the formula for velocity at point P. It's omega cross R. So I'm going to write the same expression here omega cross r, so omega a r a. So let's assume that the left gear is spinning at omega a clockwise. And let's assume that it's spinning with an angular acceleration alpha a. Now, if this gear is moving this way, then the other gear has to move in the opposite direction. So if the left gear is going clockwise, as I've shown it, then the right gear has to go counterclockwise, otherwise it's not meaningful, right? So omega b and alpha b. So I'm going to write the formula for vp as omega a r a, that is looking at the system through the lens of a, and then you can also write velocity of p using b. So do you see if that relation is true, r a omega a is r b omega b. Also, the point P has, well, it has <coughs> this. Okay, the velocity of P is going to be this fashion. Also, the acceleration in the tangential direction is going to be downwards. We can also write the tangential acceleration. So call that 
AP in the tangential direction. It's simply alpha A R A. Uh, the, what I'm doing is essentially I'm writing this formula for AT, which is the tangential component, equals alpha B R B. So what that formula does is it tells you if you know the dimensions of the the two gears, that is R A and R B. And if you know the angular speed of one of them, usually one of them is stuck to a motor so it can spin, you can find the angular speed of the other gear using that, those formulas. So uh, first formula gives how the speeds are related. The second formula gives how the angular accelerations are related. Okay, let's try to put this and solve, uh, use this formula and solve some problems. The angular velocity of the disk is omega equals 5t square plus 2. Where t is in seconds, determine the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration of point A on the disk when the time is 0.5 seconds. So as I said, uh, A would have an acceleration normal and it will have an acceleration in the tangential direction. Also, the velocity is only going to be in the tangential direction, right? Why is that A though? It is a n. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let's try to write the formulas for these con these things. Uh, velocity is omega <coughs> r. So omega is five t square plus two. The radius is zero point two. Sorry, zero point eight. And we need to find the velocity at time t equals 0 0.5. So <clears throat> so velocity as t equals 0.5 equals 2.6 meters per second and if you want the direction it is going to be at right angles I shown I've shown the directions the velocity direction is at right angles to the line joining the center to a okay then a t is alpha times r okay we do not have we are not given alpha directly, but we know what omega is, so we can find alpha using the formula alpha is d omega dt, so d dt of 5t square plus 2, so 10t, so 80 is 10 times t times r, which is 0.8, and so if you want to find acceleration in the tangential direction at 0.5 seconds, it is 10 times 0.5 times 0.8 which is 4 I think. Then An is omega square r which is 5t square plus 2 square times 0.8. So a n at t equals 0.5 equals 5 times 0.5 square plus 2 square times 0.8. So that is equal to 8.45 is what I get. 
Okay, so uh, since you asked to find the acceleration, and we're not specifically told for the direction, but only the acceleration, what I would recommend doing in such a case is to find the, the net acceleration, which is the vector or the magnitude of A. So the acceleration is going to be like so, and we need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude of A is A n square plus A t square, because both of those accelerations are at right angles, so this formula is valid. 4 square plus 8.45 square. A is 9.35 meters per second square. Okay, any questions? Very straightforward. Here is a next is a problem on gears. A motor gives gear A, this is A, an angular acceleration of two times T Q. <coughs> where t is in seconds, if this gear is initially turning at a speed of 15 radians per second, determine the angular velocity of b when time t equals 3 seconds. So uh, this is the picture which I was trying to draw, but it's hard to draw gears, but that's how a gear is, right? With, uh, it's actually a spur, gas spur gears. Uh, so when a turns clockwise, b is going to turn counterclockwise, and that is indicated by the arrows here. So let's put on what, what we want to find. So we are, we are asked to find angular velocity of B when the time is 3 seconds. We know the angular velocity of A at time, so it said initially, so I'm going to assume that initially time is 0. 15 radians per second. And we are also given alpha of A, which is 2 t cubed. Okay, so we're given initial speed, but we want to find of A, but we want to find the speed of B at a different time. So one strategy to solve this problem is first let us find the speed of A at time t equals three seconds. Okay, and then we'll try to relate how angular speed of A depends on the angular speed of B using the gear formula. So first <coughs> find omega A at t equals 3 seconds. We are also given the angular acceleration, so I'm going to write the formula which relates the angular acceleration with uh, the derivative of speed. So this is 2t cube. So t omega, we call this a, a, 2t <coughs> cube, dt, and the integral goes from Initially, omega a is 15. We want to find the speed at 3, so I'm keeping that as omega a. And then time t goes from 0 to all the way to 3. So the integral is 2 t raised to 4 divided by 4 upper limit of 3 and 0. So It's 81 divided by 2. So omega a minus 15 equals 81 divided by 2. And so omega a at t equals 3 equals 55.5 radians per second. So we found the speed at 
t equals 3. Now let's try to see if we can relate the angular speed of A with that of B. So for that we need to look at a common point. Let's call that P. Uh, this point is going to have a speed upwards. We can write the velocity of P. So next is find omega B at t equals 3 seconds. So velocity of P which I have shown in the figure equals omega A or A equals omega B or B. But now we know what omega A is at 3, three seconds. It is 55.5. The radius of A is 100 millimeters or 0.1 meters equals omega B which is the unknown at t equals 3 times the radius of B which is 175 millimeters so 0.175 and so we can solve for omega B at t equals 3 31.71 radians per second Is that clear? Sure. Any questions? Questions? Okay, let's see if you can solve a problem now based on what I just did. So for a short period of time, the motor turns gear A, this is A, with a constant angular speed, uh, angular acceleration of 4.5 radians per second square, starting from rest. So omega A at t equals 0 is 0. Determine the velocity of the cylinder. So we need to find the velocity of the cylinder and the distance it travels in 3 seconds in time equals 3 seconds. The cord is wrapped around pulley D which is rigidly connected to gear P. Okay, so what I would suggest is, I'll solve both parts, but what I would suggest is you try to solve for the first part which is solve for <coughs> VC and pull only that answer. Okay, so don't you don't have to do the second part just to VC. Okay, uh, hint is that velocity of C is going to be velocity of P, right? P is this point, and velocity of P, I just wrote down a formula for velocity of P. So you're going to start from here and find the angular, angular uh, speed of pulley P and then relate it to velocity of P. Okay, solve for omega a at 3 equals t equals 3 seconds. Then solve for omega b at t equals 3 seconds. It's essentially the same uh, procedure I used for the previous problem. And then solve for vp, which will be simply omega b t equals 3 seconds times the radius of this pulley, the, sorry, the radius of the inner cylinder, so 0.125. Okay, fine, I, I wrote down the formula for you for the third part. Your goal is to find this.
and only poll answer for well VP is VC only poll the answer for velocity of C Stop. Okay, so let's do it uh, one by one. So let's solve for angular speed at t equals 3 seconds. Now, one thing to note is that the angular acceleration is constant, which means we can use some of the formulas uh, we've written for a constant acceleration. So one of the formula is omega equals omega 0 plus alpha <laughs> ct. So omega a at t equals 3 seconds is unknown equals the initial angular speed which is 0 plus angular acceleration which is 4.5 times the time which is 3 13.5 uh, go to the next part uh, we know that omega a r a equals omega b r b uh, omega in this case is 13.5 which we just found out r a is the radius of pulley a 0 0.075 and omega b is the unknown at t equals 3 times r b the radius of b which is the bigger pulley 2 0.225 so omega b at time t equals 3 seconds equals it's 4.5 radians per second and so uh, the last step is to find velocity of c which is omega b at t equals 3 times 0.125 the reason it's 0.25 because uh, Note that C is wrapped around the, the smaller pulley, it's point, the one with 125 uh, millimeter radius. So that comes out to be 4.5 times 0 0.125, 0 0.5625. Okay, so that's the answer. And if you want to solve the next part, which is the, the distance covered, 